All right, I'm Dave Ratt, and today I'm going to show you a real simple way to make a four channel press box out of a Sound Tools Cat Box um, audio over cat analog audio over a Cat 5. Um, these cat boxes um, basically use the four twisted pairs of a shielded Cat 5 or better cable um, and transport four channels of analog audio. Now, Making a press box. A press box is pretty common for larger shows. If you've done them um, where you've had a bunch of video cameras, you'll have these camera crews come in and others run around with XLR plugs and they can't wait to plug in to something um, and grab their audio. They'll record the first three songs of the set and then get out. Um, a lot of times when I'm doing um, big bands, I won't let them record the first song because I want to make sure the mix is dialed. Um, and, you know, then they unplug and leave, or you have to send audio multiple places. Um, there's several ways of doing this. Sometimes they want mic level, sometimes they want line level. Um, so what we'll usually do is drop two press feed boxes down, a four channels, four channels or however many we need of mic level and four more of line level. Rarely will they want stereo. Dial up a mono mix into the console. And one way of doing it is use a bunch of DI boxes. You come out like an insert sand into a DI box, and then you bridge with quarter inch cables together four DI boxes, and then you um, have the mic level out. And then for the line level out, you could have a bunch of Y cables or, um, you know, they can, you don't really need to isolate all these cameras. They're almost always on battery and, um, you're not worried about ground loops. You just need four shorted together outputs. But having a professional, clean way of doing it is handy. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, so what I've done here is I've just taken a Sound Tools um, Super Cat cable, 20 feet long, and I just cut it in half and made two 10 foot pieces out of it. And let's see if I can get this untangled here and um, free one up, set one over here. And yeah, I just chopped it in half because I'm gonna make two. And that way I've got two outputs. Now, if you want to, um, when we're done with this, if you want it to be mic level, you would just come out of a quarter inch out of the console or an XLR to quarter inch adapter into a passive DI typically. And out of that DI, you would then drive this box and make it mic level and you can drive all four of the um, lines off of a single. Um, all right, so let's see the glasses here. I have my handy dandy strippers. Uh, my daughter, Sammy, who makes Sound Tools Customs Cables has taken the, uh, has borrowed those for an extended period of time. Um, so we won't be using those. We'll try this. And not my um, favorite strippers, but they work. Um, and let's see what I do. I should have a sharp little tool around here somewhere. Maybe not. We won't. The, um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to have a really easy way, since this is four channels of, um, analog audio over Cat5e, we've got all the ends in here. And you don't even need, you can even remember what to do. So we'll just peel back this, um, um, braid shield, pull that off, and then the super cat sound. The super cat cable's got this kind of rubbery, um, silicon ish um, cover over the um, pairs. You can just tear it away, maybe not. Usually scored a little bit. It's very, um, it's very gooey. It's what part, part of what makes it real flexible and protects this cable. It's, um, it's kind of a, uh, it's just a great, it's a great, and it keeps all the pairs perfectly separated. It's good stuff. Um, and we'll lose the little fuzzes in here. And I've done plenty of video, I've done many videos on soldering cables. This is not um, uh, really to show you how to solder as much as just a simple way to do it. Okay, so we got our four pairs, a pair of blue, brown, orange, and green. And what we'll do is we'll just separate it out. So all we're going to do is take all the stripes and put them together. And those are going to go to pin two. And we're going to take all of the um, solids and put those together. 
and those are going to go to pin 3. And let's get these separated up. And what do we want to use to strip them? Um, I had a plan, and I don't remember what it was. Okay, so um, these are some um, scissors for um, uh, Cat5 type cook stripping, and they've got a little um, stripping bit right in there that helps me do this. And I'm just stripping about 3 16 of an inch, just a little bit out there, just enough to twist them together into a pair, into a group. And so I don't have to worry about that. I will. Well, I've got these cool um, expansion pliers on the other videos with, with uh, rubber bands. I, I used a rubber band on a pair of needle nose, but um, um, I found a pair of expansion pliers in my toolbox, which also work really well. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on so that it works better. And it should be ready about now. I'm trying to breathe this stuff. And let's do the other four. These scissors, I do recommend, um, I think these are, I don't know who makes these, these are um, Jonah, Jonard tools, but these um, Cat 5E cutting scissors are really nice, because they just, um, we got everything you need to do, terminate. And there's our other, these are the solids here. And we're going to want the stripes, the solids, and the shield all to be about the same length. So we're going to take them down. Make sure we got no loose ends. I got no stray wires. Maybe one. Um, and when I tin these, the um, shield, I don't want to go all the way down. I want to leave some untinned area between the um, end. All right, let's go ahead and um, open up one of these. This is a Neutrix NC3FXX bag. Uh, it's a good connector. Put on the boot. And I will, now with my cables, a lot of times, um, you know, they can be shrunk or not shrunk. A lot of times we won't shrink them um, because they're easier to repair and they last well, especially if you have some pretty um, high gauge cable. but. Um, the cat cable has got thinner gauge, so it's a little nice. It's a little um, more fragile, so I do like to shrink the um, cat fives when um, um, terminating to XLR or anything that's not uh, um, RJ45. And we want pin three to be um, solids. Let's go ahead and tin this up. Now, I prefer to tin all three, tin the ends, tin the, tin the um, connector, and then merge the two into a single puddle there. And let's go to, looks good, number two in here. Got my pliers. Cool. And I'm not going to um, shrink the ground. 
no real reason to do it. It's plenty strong, doesn't need protection. Uh, make sure we didn't heat these up too much. Make sure the shrink will go down over the pins, which it will. There we go. And there we go. Cool. Uh, my daughters also took my pencil um, shrink gun. So we won't be using that, we'll be using the big guy. There's a special honor to having your daughter take your soldering tools. Now I didn't put a shrink over this um, overall. Um, you may want to do that. I'd probably recommend it. But um, on the other hand, this cable is typically not going to be out in the field. It's not going to get a lot of a lot of wear and tear. And the way that this strain relief is set up, especially on these connectors, it really holds this well. So um, I think fast and easy is the way to go for this. And um, now we have handy dandy Go ahead and turn this off I'm not gonna make the other one but um, normally you would make two either one for left and one for right if you wanted to uh, stereo pair or one for mic level one for line level out of a single cable and you don't need to use the um, uh, sound tools uh, super cat cable any shielded cat 5e cable or, or better will work for this um, and now we've got a handy dandy XLR to EtherCon. So let's see what it does. So we would use a you know, cat box and um, use the, um, might as well use the Sound Tools XLR snipper sender set to test. And there's channel one, two, three, and four. So they're all paralleled together. Um, comes in. Um, now this cable, if this cable is plugged, this acts as a shorting cable. So now, if you were to have this cable plugged in, for better or for worse, depending on what you're trying to achieve, if you had, let's say, a cat box um, um, female, and you have this shorting cable plugged in, well, it is going to short together all of these lines. So as you can see, it just shorts them together. You can see that it shorts here, 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 uh, and they're all... Um, now it's just all one line. Okay, so in any case, this is a um, super easy way. Stripes go to pin two, solids go to pin three. That is for the Sound Tools standard wiring. Sound Tools wiring is going to be stripes to pin two, solids to pin three, and you just put cut an uh, EtherCon cable in half, put an XLR on there, and you've got the ability to plug this into a mixing board and have four identical outputs or plug a di box into the output uh, mixing board and then come out of the xlr of the di box into this xlr here and you've got four mic level outs and a very simple press box cool cool